University of the West Indies and uh, Chile. But we've worked really, really closely with Costa Rica in particular, and one of the best parts of the project <laughs> has been organized by Jamie, and it's a youth exchange. And he's going to tell you about that, because what we've done um, is to work with Sky Eco Museum really closely over the past few years. Um, and um, we also have here our advisor, Peter Davis, from the project. And at one point, Peter did say to me, I really think this was the best part of the project. <laughs> and, and we have to agree. So, um, so yes, yeah, so thanks to Jamie and all the young people for taking part. Thank you. Once upon a time, we were all young people, dealing with school, parents, trying to find our place in the world around us, understanding our background, our community, the shared heritage of our communities, and learning from our parents, our grandparents, our role models in what seemed an ever-changing world. I'm delighted to speak with you this morning about one of the things that I'm so passionate about, and that's working with young people within a museums and heritage context. However, let me introduce myself as Karen um, introduced as well. <laughs> um, I'm a PhD student now. I used to be the project administrator and youth programme worker for an international project called EU LAC Museums, which is coordinated here in the University of St Andrews and is supported by the regional alliances and networks of the International Council of Museums, such as ICOM Europe and ICOM Latin America and the Caribbean. It's funded by the European Union's largest ever research innovation programme and was the first large scale project that the School of Art History has received as well for funding. The basis of the project is that community museums allow underrepresented communities to take a place in history as well as contributing to environmental sustainability and community empowerment. Today I'm speaking on behalf of the EU LAC Museum Consortium and as you can see we have a widespread over two continents from South America, Central America, the Caribbean and of course here in Europe. Understanding the relationships between culture, culture, heritage and young people has seldom been more urgent for the museum and heritage volunteers and professionals in Europe, Latin America and the Caribbean. Of course, indeed for all communities across our world. In recent years, cultural heritage sites and their communities around the world have been acutely affected by natural disasters, conflict, lack of security, youth unemployment and related society challenges. The situation is heightened in the Global South, where maintaining daily life, well-being, lack of investment and recognition of the significance of heritage and community empowerment can be a problem. For communities in remote and rural island communities, such as the Isle of Skye, Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago, and the indigenous communities of Costa Rica, the challenge is even more heightened. Museum and heritage organisations, from the National Museum right down to the community-led heritage groups, such as some people here today, bear a huge responsibility for the communities they serve, but sometimes don't receive the recognition that they deserve. Findings from the RSC workshops it became clear that here in Scotland, they require investment, both financial and through the increasing capacities of the many volunteers and professionals that run Scotland's heritage sector. In particular, with our young people, through the intergenerational dialogue, the EU LAC Museums project sought to challenge this and to work together with the communities and the elders of communities across the Isle of Skye community of Staffan, Portree, Carbos, Carbos. <laughs> and the indigenous communities of Costa Rica, Baruca, Ricuri, and San Vicente, and the Porto region of um, northern Portugal. In particular, our young people sought to do intergenerational dialogue to strengthen their roots. As you can see from this quote, 28% of young people in the EU are facing poverty. At the same time in Latin America, it's a staggering 41%. Across the two regions, we aim to develop an associated history and theory, and the Bioregional Youth Exchange aim to transform both individual lives and the communities involved. To create a method of implementation that we could do a youth exchange not just in Europe and Latin America, but perhaps a wider scope as well. For community, sorry, young people participating in our programme have self-identified that they face many challenges today, in particular the confidence to do public speaking and to take part in the community that they live in. As you'll be able to see in a few minutes, our young people have been on a transformational journey and now they're here today speaking with you all. 
By creating a museum program for both the overall community and the young people involved to share their thoughts and debate solutions, in addition to physically visit each community across the regions, it created a sense that eu like museums fostered mutual understanding and experiences and knowledge between the two regions. In Costa Rica, the project worked, as I said, with San Vicente Eco Museum, the Community Museum of Baruca, and the Community Museum of Recuray. In, Por in Portugal, we worked in the community, sorry, the Town Museum of Penafal, the Hat Museum in Barcelov, sorry, the Pottery Museum in Barcelov, and the Hat Museum in Santa Jean de Marera. I apologise if my Portuguese isn't very good, I apologise. And finally in Scotland, in the Staff and Eco Museum in the Isle of Skye. So let me introduce our fantastic young people that have taken part in this programme. Andrew Whitehead. Hi, I'm Andrew. I live in the far northeast of Skye in the staffing community. Um, I've just recently become a student at the University of the Highlands in Portree, the main town of Skye. Um, the Skye Eco Museum, known as Kemenin in Gaelic, meaning steps in English, um, was Scotland's first eco museum. It was set up by the local community trust to preserve, interpret, and manage our heritage to ensure sustainable development in the northeast of Sky. Um, as a museum without walls, the eco museum covers 13 significant natural sites um, on Sky. No, there's no map. Um, as a museum, oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, the most famous site uh, being the Old Man of Store, known as, known as Anstor in Gaelic. Um, maybe some of you will recognise it because it's been in many films, TV series and music videos lately. Um, the Eco Museum has, is managed by the Staffing Community Trust for local people, by the local people. It seeks to build Staffing's local economy and provide social activities with the Gaelic um, language being a key part of it. Um, within the EULAC Youth Exchange, I've experienced in the community of Reykjavik in Costa Rica, uh, taking ownership of their land, sharing and interpreting their heritage, uh, sharing their history and interpreting their way of life through their own voice in their community museum. Uh, through the experience, I feel more confident to take on outside influences that challenge the challenge and threats that Sky faces, such as over tourism. Myra Pentland. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Myra. I'm a student at the University of Manchester. Just now I'm studying anthropology and politics. And I was born in Portree on the Isle of Skye and I grew up there. Um, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about the language of Gaelic, of course. Growing up on Skye, I was lucky enough to learn our native language, Scottish Gaelic. Um, however, the, la the language was once spoken widely across the country, but over the centuries, the language has become at risk due to different reasons, such as migration of people moving south towards the uh, Scottish, mainly English-speaking cities. Um, from the 18th century until not long ago, many people had the perception that Gaelic was inferior to English, um, and this caused many people to be forced to use English as their only language. So, you know, being punished to use Gaelic, so a lot of our grandparents can probably remember that. Um, in present day, Gaelic still obviously faces many challenges, such as the lack of recognition for non-speakers, uh, families not keeping the language alive in their homes and the ever-growing need for local and national government to promote it. Despite all these challenges though, it's been preserved through poems, literature, art and stories from across the ages, despite over 200 years of su suppression. Gaelic culture is still vibrant and relevant in not just Scotland but across the world. From my experience of the EU LAC Youth Exchange Programme, uh, we can compare this to the Baruca language spoken in Baruca and Recuray in Costa Rica. Um, with Gaelic uh, to see that there's always going to be challenges but through the support and guidance from community elders and young people such as us we can take the next step in using and promoting Gaelic. And Jonathan Smith. <coughs> Hi 
Hiya, uh, I'm Jonathan and I was raised on Portree in the Isle of Skye and I'm currently an art history student at University of Edinburgh. Um, so I'm just going to be talking a little bit about the Isle of Skye in general. So um, the Isle of Skye is a relatively large island in the northwest of Scotland um, and it's the largest island in the Inner Hebrides. Um, though it's now connected by a bridge for many years until roughly around 20 years ago, it was um, only accessible by boat and there's still some um, ways to get there by boat. Um, the weather there, um, although we do get a few odd days like this, um, for the most part it is um, overcast and in winter roughly the average is around um, 3 degrees and in summer around 12. <laughs> and um, the population of Skye at the moment is around 10,000, with the most part of the people living in Portree um, around 4,000 in there. Although this is quite small in historical context, with there being around 30,000 living there um, before um, mass eviction in the uh, 19th century. Um, so, if there's one thing that's important about Skye that leaves a lasting impression, it's got to be the landscape. That's why our Sky Eco Museum is so important for the whole island. It's our way of maintaining our heritage against the incoming threats of over tourism and businesses exploiting our community. It's our island community um, fighting to keep and protect our areas that are valuable to the people across the island. Sky was chosen to be part of the EULAC Youth Exchange, as like, like in Costa Rica, the island is a remote um, rural community sharing many of the same threats as our friends in Baruca, Reykjavik, and San Vicente in Costa Rica. Such as young people moving away to work um, and how to make um, community work, um, tourism work for our community rather than our community being made to work for the tourists and getting recognition for history and our language, um, Scottish Gaelic. And finally, Kirsten Towers. Hi, I'm Kirsten. I'm from the far west of the Isle of Skye in a village called Carbus, and I now study maths at the University of Aberdeen. During the Youth Exchange and our monthly workshops, we challenged our own perceptions of our community in Skye, debated about what is a community museum, spoke about why heritage is important, and why we need to retain our ownership of our own heritage as a community. By being part of the Youth Exchange as a group, Costa Ricans, Portuguese and Scottish, we engaged and shared our traditional songs and dances, stories, and realized that no matter which part of the world you're from, we're all the same. I saw so many similarities in Reykjavik and in Costa Rica to my own community in Skye. Crucially, for the future of all our communities in Costa Rica, in Scotland, and across the world, we must seek to ensure our intangible cultural heritage is not lost. That's why programs such as the Youth Exchange are so important. I'm very aware we've run out of time. Um, I'll just summarise just very quickly. If you'd like to find out more, we have a fantastic experience booklet and education pack. Um, you can download it on our website. And finally, this is my favourite photograph from the entire experience. I'm not going to lie, it was a very stressful experience <laughs> um, from organising. Um, but it was three years of my life, which I'm truly honoured to be part of their lives. And as you can see by our young people, I should say, when they first started, none of them could do public speaking. And look at them now. So could I ask for a round of applause? <laughs> and, uh,